Luxray is the prime case of a Pokemon that has an amazing design, but is absolutely horrible competitively. It does have a base 120 attack stat, but other than that, it's extremely underwhelming. But Gen 9 was actually pretty generous to our X-Ray Vision homie. It has access to the ability Guts, which gives it a 50% boost to attack if it's statused. We toss on the Flame Orb to allow Luxray to burn itself, and all of a sudden, this thing hits harder than people expect. And we compare this with the move Facade, which becomes a 140 power normal move if you're statused. Gen 9's new toys include being able to tear it into the normal type to make Facade get stab, and also take advantage of its new stab in Supercell Slam, which hits hard if you don't miss. The problem is that Luxray is still just extremely slow, which is why it's amazing that it now gets access to Trailblaze to boost speed and do damage, and if set up properly, Luxray can definitely be amazing. Or at least, kinda try. Alright look, Luxray has been so done dirty by Game Freak that sometimes you gotta take matters into your own hands. And that is exactly what I have done today. I have made this thing a monster, and uh, someone's got to do it. If you're into that kind of thing, definitely hit that subscribe button, and let's go ahead and jump into the match. So, first of all, my opponent's team is ridiculous, and uh, it's going to be an uphill battle, that's for sure. However, they decide to lead off with a Darkrai. I actually end up leading with the Scizor, because I want to get some nice little choice band U-turn damage, and there's never been a better guy. So, they actually decide to go for the Dark Void. Of course, it is going to miss, because John claude even though we do have some big old meaty claws that are an easy target, we do uh, we do avoid, and I'm able to then go for the U-turn, and that just straight up knocks out the Darkrai, which is a fantastic way to start the match. And that definitely would have been very bad if the Void connected, but we're in a good spot here to try to figure out some momentum. Now, I decide to go into the Gastrodon. It's always kind of a risky maneuver killing something with a U-turn, and then especially going into a Mon like Gastrodon, but I realize they don't have any grass coverage, or at least it doesn't seem like it, so I can bring this thing in and prioritize setting up my Stealth Rock. I feel like it's going to be important to break potential Focus Ashes, get some nice little chip, and that's exactly what they do. Now, they decide to go into a Snorlax. Anytime I see this fat boy, I'm figuring he probably goes for the Belly Drum. However, this one instead just goes ahead and sits on me. Not only does over half to a defensive Gastrodon, but also gets the Para on the ground type, which is a, a nice little salt shaker to the slug. And uh, at this point, I'm figuring, okay, hold on, that did so much damage that has to be a, a Choice Band Snorlax. So going off of that, which is actually a really interesting, Choice Band Snorlax is super fun. However, uh, this is going to allow me to go right back into Scizor, who I know can take a Body Slam because we resist, and then I can either go for the close combat, potentially go for the U-turn to try to get some uh, a nice little pivot. But I decide I'm just going to go beating some stuff up. He doesn't actually have a lot of answers to switch into Scizor in general. And a close combat seems real nice here. So they actually switch one fat bear into the new guy. And other fat bear is actually going to take a nice little claw to the fist. Wait, to the face? Claw fist to the face, and then it's actually going to take care of the Blood Moon. So, that actually puts us in a fantastic spot while we do take some Rocky Helmet damage. Uh, it's always great to see that thing gone. It's generally just bulky and can do so much damage to pretty much anything I have. So, I'm feeling pretty good, except what we're not feeling good about is the switch into Fluttermane here. Of course, I'm locked into Choice Banded uh, in Close Combat, and I don't want to be going punching any ghosts today. So I decide to save the Scizor for later. That thing is potentially good with the priority bullet punch against this Fluttermane. So I'm going to go ahead and switch into the Cryogonal. Now this thing is about specially defensive as titties. And this Shadow Ball is going to do so much damage that it reveals that this thing is definitely going to be choice specs. Which is great to know. So I decide to go for the Flash Cannon and the game completely glitches out. I've actually, I've never seen this. It's actually so crazy that there's even like a hidden message within it. I don't even, I don't know what that's all about. But it turns out, it was actually just the Fluttermane going for a Terrestrialization it actually turns itself into a Ghost type, just is gonna give it enough damage to where now, this Shadow Ball definitely kills the Kragonal, and that is very bad. Again, this is the only thing I have that can take attacks. However, the most important thing we saw was uh, that that is definitely Choice Specs damage. I didn't see a booster energy. This is definitely gonna be a Specs Fluttermane. And guess what, ladies and gentlemen, it is time. I'm gonna go ahead and switch into No Fucks Ray. He does not care, especially about Shadow Balls, because what I can do is I can actually go for that Terra Normal, and it's gonna allow me to get up a free Trailblaze, which is gonna give me a nice little speed boost. And also, the Terra is gonna come extremely clutch, not only in being able to dodge Shadow Balls, but now we're gonna get a nice little stab on our facades for later. So, I put the diamond on my head first of all, Luxray looking badass as ever, and they do go for that Shadow Ball, which is absolutely perfect. Does not affect me, and uh, it's super important that we don't take unnecessary damage. So, 
I go for one Trailblaze. That's going to do a nice little chunk, but most importantly, of course, it is going to give me the Speed Boost and also activate that Flame Warp. We are fully set up with the Luxray. At least you would think, however, because I do have to go for a second Trailblaze. The reason is because they have very fast mons like the Qian Pao. Uh, the Fluttermane is going to be faster even with one tra Trailblaze boost, so I do have to go for another one, as they are going to actually switch out the Flutter, likely imagining they can come back in, still outspeed and kill me. But uh, Urshifu comes in on that second Trailblaze, and now with two speed boosts, we are definitely faster than the entire team. And I've found myself in a position that is very hard to get with this Luxray. But... Uh, I'm nearly at full health. I know I could take an Aqua Jet. However, they do just get outsped. And I go for that nice little facade. And that takes care of the second bear of the game. Down goes, again, one of the scariest mons in the meta. And Luxray is out here looking like uh, looking like a god himself amongst uh, some of the scariest mons. So, now they get a free switch into whatever they like. The fun part is, see, we are extremely fast. They decide to go into Danger Noodle here who is, of course, extremely fast himself, does have that sort of ruin. But the best news ever is that the Stealth Rock chip is going to break a potential Focus Sash. So I can actually outspeed, thank you, to allowing me to get up two Trailblazes. And a Facade absolutely demolishes this thing. And we are having noodles for dinner out here. So this takes care of Qian Pao. And uh, again, we're still at enough health here to where I can still at least take one attack from stuff as long as it's not from the Flutter main. But... That's exactly why we we got the two Trailblazes. So, they decide to bring in the Flutter. Uh, this thing is sitting at around half HP. Doesn't really matter because we're going to take a nice little bite out of him. Anyway, I do have the uh, the Ghost coverage here with the Crunch. And outspeeding things like Qian Pao and Fluttermane in the same match. is uh, That's the reason why we play the game, baby. That is going to take care uh, of the Flutter. And uh, this Luxray truly is going places that have never been gone before. I will say... This thing got itself in a situation where the stars really aligned and allowed this. Most of the time, Luxray is not going to have this opportunity, but we will definitely take it when we can. The final Pokemon is, of course, going to be that Snorlax, and we can show off the power of the guts-boosted facade with the diamond on our head, and uh, Snorlax is he's going to have a bad time. It turns out I actually end up getting a critical hit. I think this thing would have been able to live, um, but uh, yeah, that's going to take care of the Snorlax, and also is going to finish off the game. So again... If you're wondering how many fucks this Luxray gives, it is absolutely zero. And uh, that was a super crazy match. Now, that's not quite enough, as I do have one more for you. This team is really fun, and I wanted to try to keep it going and see if we can get Luxray to do some more shenanigans. Now, this is a game where it looks like we're going to have to deal with some sticky web, and in general, some very interesting mods. So, let's go ahead and jump into it. So this time they are going to go ahead and lead off with that Galvantula. It is to be expected when you do see the option for the Sticky Web, it's probably going to be the lead. It's also probably going to be Focus Sash, so I decide to toss out the Scizor. I can go for a U-turn, potentially break the Sash, and then uh, you know figure out a matchup. So they do of course go for that Sticky Web there, and I'm just going to U-turn on him. It does knock it down to Sash. And that is exactly what we like to see, as uh, I do have some a couple different options here. Now, of course, I do have Rapid Spin on the team in the form of having it on my Snowflake, but also it wouldn't be a bad time to maybe go into Gastrodon. I decide I'm just going to go in the old Nippy here. It's, it's going to get cold up in this bitch. And while they do have the Ghost type with the, uh, the Spiritomb on their team, I figure it's probably still worth it for me to go for that Rapid Spin. The plan is uh, to play a couple turns ahead. Even if they do go into Spirit Tomb, I do have some op options to pivot into that thing. So it turns out they actually just Volt Switch right into Metagross, which is great because now I'm able to get up that Rapid Spin, take care of those Sticky Webs. And if I can get my Stealth Rock up, it seems like, you know, Gavantula is not going to be able to come in. And we're going to have a webless game, which is always the goal, going up against the Gavantula. So, on the Metagross, my best answer is actually just to go right into Gastrodon, which plays in perfectly. Because now, taking a Heavy Slam easily, I'm just defensive as hell slug over here. And uh, e set representing the east side. Where I do want to just go for that Stealth Rock and uh, potentially get him up just before that Gavantula comes in. Uh, they do decide to switch out the Metagross, however. And they're going to go ahead and bring in the Gyarados. So, Gyarados is kind of an interesting matchup into Gastrodon. It can end up hitting me with Waterfall because of Storm Drain, but it does bring itself into an opportunity where it can likely Dragon Dance. Uh, however, I do get up that Stealth Rock, which is going to be nice. Don't have to worry about Galvantula unless they have Hazard Control, which doesn't seem like they do. And uh, while Gastrodon is in a good spot defensively, I can't do much to this thing. My only option is to click Surf. And I figure, okay, well damn, Gastrodon really would enjoy a Toxic here, and we do not have it. Not only do I not have it, Gastrodon just doesn't even get it in this generation, and 
truly a bad day for Big Stall, how they took Toxic from literally everything. Anyway, I decided to switch into Ambipom, as they actually end up going for the Taunt, which is actually amazing for me. So, this puts me in a spot where I can go for some Fake Out damage, and uh, I was mostly just kind of considering this thing likely goes for the Dragon Dance. I'm probably going to have to end up faking out a couple of times and sacking stuff, but Pepto Abysmal Monkey finds himself in a spot where, hey, this is actually great, because... Judging off that fake out damage, this thing is not bulky. I can then go for the double hit, and that's actually going to take care of the Gyarados, which is fantastic. Ambipom being able to take care of a Gyarados that way, with the fake out and the double hit damage, is actually pretty amazing, as long as it's just an offensive Gyarados. Anyway, uh, with the revenge switch, they decide to bring in Spiritomb. Now, if I've ever seen a Spiritomb before, I know what is coming, and that is definitely going to be a Will-O-Wisp, especially against something like an Ambipom, so... What I decide to do is go for the U-turn. It's nice little chip damage, but also, this is going to put me in a spot where I have a guy who actually enjoys being burnt. And that is going to be our good friend Guts Ray. So, I bring this thing in thinking, hey, go ahead and burn me just so I don't have to use my item. I do make the prediction correct, and I do come in on the Will-O-Wisp, which is actually pretty damn sweet. So, I don't have to even wait for the Flame Orb to activate. I'm just immediately burnt. And now, all of a sudden, I've got myself some big damage on my hands. I'm also faster and the spirit tomb here and this thing is a defensive problem so it's time to do some wall breaking which is what this luxury is here to do i can go for the supercell slam and that just straight up knocks out the spirit tomb which is actually pretty damn wild so it is always extremely risky running supercell slam would i recommend it probably not but the damage is sweet if you don't miss or they don't switch into a ground type so we're able to take that uh, and we're feeling pretty good so now they decide to go into the Clefable. If I want Luxray to try to pull off a sweep here, I'm gonna need a speed boost. So, I do have to go for the Trailblaze here. Does not very much, but it uh, gives me that speed boost. And now, this thing decides to go for the Cosmic Power. It's gonna be, it's gonna be that kind of chewed piece of bubblegum, huh? It's gonna be a defensive, uh, annoying, extra annoying Clefable. They're always, I guess, annoying. But, with the Cosmic Power, this thing kinda sucks. Luckily, however, again, Luxray is the wall breaker here. And my best bet is just to go right for the facade. I've already made it all the way here, and I know that I can take at least one attack from this thing anyway. So it still feels like you know, two facades should be able, able to take care of this thing, even with that plus one defense. So you already know we're going to go for that Terra Normal, put the diamond, we're blinging out out here. And a uh, nice little guts boosted stab facade is going to do a whole lot to uh, Big Booty Judy over here. It doesn't quite knock it out, but... It does put it in range to where another should take care of it, and they actually end up going for another Cosmic Power. And uh, trying to trying to get this thing as bulky as possible is a bold move against a Luxray who is uh, pretty much fully set up over here. So the thing is, after that next Cosmic Power, it's actually looking pretty close here on this next Facade. I still feel confident in the Luxray, so I'm just going to go for the Facade once more. And they actually decide to go ahead and conserve the Clefable. I did, however, get some super meaningful chip on that thing. Uh, to where it should be a whole lot easier to take care of. They actually make the nice play. They're going to go ahead and sack the Galvantula. This thing comes in. It just dies to Stealth Rock. But more importantly, it is going to allow them a uh, matchup. A better matchup, at least, into the Luxray. So I just go ahead and facade the air. Uh, just because, literally, why the hell not? And I am getting chipped by that Flame Orb. So... On the Revenge Switch, they can now bring in the Infernape. So, Infernape comes in here on a situation where I am faster with that Trailblaze. However, a Mach Punch is their best priority bet. Now, at this health, Mach Punch actually does like 60% to me. So, I should be able to take at least one of them. However, they are going to go ahead and Terrastalize here. I'm just hoping it's not going to be a Terra Fighting to give it that extra boost and damage. And, of course, it is. They do get that Terra Fighting, the Fist on the Head is going to give this thing just enough damage to where if they do have that Mach Punch, they are going to grab the kill. They obviously are going to go for that Mach Punch, and being normal type sometimes has its benefits, sometimes doesn't, because that is going to take care of me. However, Luxray has gotten ourselves in a situation in this match where I've broken basically both of the walls. I've also forced the Infernape into using the Terra. So honestly, at this point in the match, I'm totally fine with this uh, kind of trade-off, because... Now this is going to allow me a position into the Haxorus. I'm not only going to look badass, but also I'm in a spot where I know I can take at least one attack from this thing, and then I can go for the Dragon Dance. And they're actually going to end up switching out here, and this is probably one of the reasons why they want to conserve the Clefable is for the Haxorus. Um, and uh, I can just go for that Dragon Dance. It's probably also going to be an unaware Clefable a lot of the time if you're going to see it as a Cosmic Power one. It's going to try to ignore the stat boost. But I do go for the Dragon Dance regardless. Uh, and at this point, the main reason why we like to run this Haxorus is because of Poison Jab. The people go into their fairies, and I'm like, hey, 
What happens if I just poke you with a little bit of a uh, little bit of grape juice? That does take care of it, and down goes the Clefable. So Luxray put that thing in a position where that poison jab finishes it off, and uh, it's actually a huge difference in the game. So. Now they can just go into the Metagross here, and uh, I do have the coverage on this thing as well. It does have the priority with the Bullet Punch, however, uh, it doesn't quite do enough for him, and an Earthquake is actually going to end up finishing off the old Xbox 360. So, their final Pokemon is going to be that Infernape, but luckily since I have the Dragon Dance, I'm going to be able to outspeed, and even though they are Terra Fighting, I should be able to take the Mach Punch, no problem. So, Luxray really opened up the match here. And uh, shout out to the dude for making it happen. It would have been super clutch if they did not have the freaking terrifying mock punch, but you know, sometimes you gotta try to find a way to work around it regardless. But they do go for that mock punch, opens up the door for me to go for that dragon claw, and at plus one, it is gonna take care of the ape and also gonna finish off the match. So I thought that was just a, a pretty fun game. We had two kind of you know contrasting uses uh, of the Luxray, but both of which showed that uh, the thing is absolutely a beast if you can make it happen. So thank you guys very much for watching. I really do appreciate all the support on these videos. Make sure to leave a like if you did enjoy. Also want to give a huge shout out to my YouTube members. You guys are really making the full-time content happen. Uh, if you're unaware, I do have YouTube memberships where I upload or at least try to do at least one video a week of extra content to, to members only. And it's just a good way to support the channel. Go ahead and hit that join button if you're interested. And uh, definitely no pressure. I'll catch you guys next time. Peace out.